Joining us now is Mark Regev, senior advisor to Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu and Israel's former ambassador to the UK. Um, ambassador Regev, this violence in Jerusalem again, three Israelis killed, um, another day, more attacks. Meanwhile, the talks are getting tougher, we are told, in Doha. What are you hearing? So, first of all, you're right. Uh, it was a tough day. We, we woke up to a, a vicious terror attack in Jerusalem. Uh, Hamas-inspired gunmen just going to a, 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 a bus stop and mowing people down with an M16 and with a pistol. We were lucky that we had off-duty uh, soldiers there who could neutralize the threat. Otherwise, we would have had many more than three people uh, killed. And I think this just shows what, what Hamas is all about. Yes, this is a, 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 the targeting, the deliberate targeting of civilians. And this is the nature of the beast. This is called terrorism. And this is what Hamas is all about. And we've tried very hard uh, by being preemptive, and we've spoken about this, Andrea, to keep the level of violence down on the West Bank, to try to neutralize the threat before it emerges. But today, it started off badly. Do you think that this could be the last day of the temporary truce, from what you're hearing out of Qatar? So uh, I was briefed just before coming to speak to you, and uh, it's up in the air. We have to see two things happen for this, uh, 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 the pause in the fighting against Hamas, uh, uh, for the pause to continue. Once again, they have to release another eight people Another eight hostages, according to the understandings reached. We received two hours ago two uh, Israeli hostages, both women, one 20-year-old, uh, sorry, 21-year-old, one 40-year-old. Uh, and another eight must be delivered, according to the understandings tonight, must be returned home. And we're waiting for that eight uh, uh, to arrive. That'll take the total to 10, which, as you know, is in accordance with the agreements, with the understandings reached. And then we'll have to wait to see, is Hamas going to propose a release for tomorrow? And if Hamas proposes a, a, a release of further hostages for tomorrow, in accordance with the understandings reached, uh, uh, it's possible that the pause in the fighting can continue. But I can't give you an assurance that I know for a fact that Hamas is going to deliver the release of hostages tonight as promised, or that they're going to give us a list that is according to the uh, uh, agreements reached. And so we have to wait and see. And Israel has to be prepared for both alternatives. One, that the humanitarian pause to release uh, hostages continues. And we also have to be ready tomorrow for the uh, uh, resumption of hostilities. And last night, it was about four minutes to midnight uh, before the release actually took place. So it was right up against the, right up against the, the midnight deadline. Um, there were reports out of Doha that in return for more hostages, including men, including men of military age, to be released, which Bill Burns, our CIA director, is pushing for, that the Hamas is demanding a, a larger number of Palestinians per hostage, something for uh, more than three for one. Is that accurate? So I'm not at liberty. I, I'm not at liberty to go to the details of what is what is being discussed. Well, would that and be a deal breaker? If these talks will succeed, if these talks will succeed, it's only because they're done in discretion. And so I'm not going to talk about the details publicly. Um, we'd like to see more hostages released, obviously. That is one of our prime motivations in this uh, conflict. But we've got no illusions about who we're up against. It's not just the shooting uh, this morning uh, in Jerusalem, but we've seen what Hamas is capable of doing. We're seeing, seeing the sort of violence that they have inflicted upon the Israeli people. Uh, we saw just the story yesterday about the Bibas family with the 10-month-old uh, baby and his older brother, four-year-old, and Hamas says they're dead. And we know that they were alive. We've seen the pictures. They were very much alive when they were taken in to Hamas captivity. The, uh, they kidnapped babies, and then they, they die. And, and we've got no illusions. This is a brutal, fanatical, very cruel enemy. And so uh, I think I said to you previously that when you try to do a deal with these people, even when you have the support of the United States and the Egyptians and others, when you try to deal with these people, it's like uh, uh, having a tooth removed. It's painful. It's never easy. 
And uh, so we won't know until tomorrow morning if, in fact, the, the humanitarian pause is continuing or if, in fact, we're back to, to, to fighting a war against Hamas. And in the way you fight that war, the Secretary Blinken was a lot more pointed today. And all of the public messages from Washington are, in fact, not to proceed with the southern offensive until you can assure that there is more protection for civilians. Uh, are, you, are you taking that in? Are you going to change the way you're targeting? So we, we're trying to be as surgical as we can. We discussed many things today in our meeting with Secretary Blinken, and, and we share the same goals. Uh, one, we have to destroy Hamas. There's, there's no doubt that the uh, idea that Hamas will continue to rule the, the Gaza Strip is unacceptable to the Israelis. Uh, we refuse to live any longer next to this terror in our enclave in constant fear of terrorists crossing the border and butchering our, our people, butchering our children. Uh, but we also agree with the United States uh, on the principle that we have to keep Gaza's civilian population as safe as possible out of the uh, uh, fighting. And I can tell you today in our meetings with, with Blinken and his team, we showed the maps, we showed them areas where there are humanitarian zones, safe zones for the civilians in southern Gaza to, to go to when the fighting uh, returns, uh, zones where there should be humanitarian aid. And we talked about our desire to see the international community set up field hospitals and tent cities and, and so forth to safeguard Gaza civilians for the duration of the conflict. Our enemy are, are the vicious Hamas terrorists. We don't target Gaza civilians.